Waterborne diseases are responsible for approximately 3.4 million deaths per year globally. And enteric viruses and bacteria are often implicated in waterborne disease outbreaks. Understanding which pathogens are causing waterborne diseases in a community can help in guiding vaccine efforts, documenting disease burden, and evaluating effects of public health intervention. However, many people who are infected by a pathogen do not have visible symptoms. For example, only about 1 in 200 people with poliovirus infection experience acute flaccid paralysis. One important way to monitor for disease prevalence and silently circulating pathogens is through environmental surveillance. One common method of environmental surveillance is the testing of water samples from the environment for presence of pathogens. Because enteric pathogens are spread through feces, they can be detected in wastewater or surface waters impacted by wastewater. Environmental surveillance targets include viruses such as poliovirus and rotavirus bacteria such as Salmonella typhi and Vibrio cholera, protozoa such as Giardia lamblia and Cryptosporidium parvum, and antimicrobial resistance genes. This video introduces the field protocol for an environmental surveillance method called the Bag Mediated Filtration System, or BMFS. Using the BMFS, the sample is collected in a bag, which is then hung on a tripod stand. The sample filters by gravity through a ViroCap filter, and pathogens are captured on the filter. This proven method enhances the probability of detecting enteric pathogens in the environment, which is an important step towards improving public health. This video will walk you through the BMFS field protocols. Before we start, it's important to remember that working with wastewater or potentially contaminated water presents a biosafety hazard. Remember, your safety and that of your team comes first. Please use personal protective equipment at all times, including a lab coat, gloves, and a face mask. Within a field sampling team, it is a good idea to designate two specific field technician roles. The first field technician will work directly with the sample. We will refer to this person as the direct contact technician. And in this video, they will wear light blue gloves. This person will have dirty hands and should not enter the backpack or use clean items without changing gloves. The second field technician will hand items from the backpack to the direct contact technician, collect waste, and fill out the chain of custody form. We will refer to this second technician as the clean hands technician. And in this video, they will wear dark blue gloves. This person will have clean gloves and should not contact the sample unless necessary. If your gloves are exposed to the source water or potentially biohazardous materials, change them before touching other clean materials. A bleach, ethanol, vircon, or other disinfectant solution should be used for sanitization of the bag just after sample collection, the tripod stand, and the viral cap filter housing. An appropriate concentration of the disinfectant solution should be used and can be found in the written BMFS field protocol. If your skin or clothing is exposed to contaminated water, disinfect the exposed area immediately with ethanol. Use ethanol hand sanitizer immediately after sampling is complete. Before your team enters the field, you will need to prepare several items. First, make sure that you have two cold packs previously frozen at negative 20 degrees Celsius. Label the ViroCap filter housing with the appropriate identifying information, for example, include the filter ID, sampling location, date, and your initials. If you are using an electronic sample tracking system like QR codes, this information can be incorporated into the system's pre-made labels. Next, prepare the collection bag. Tie a rope to the black loop near the top of the collection bag. Attach a tubing adapter and tubing clamp to the short segment of PVC tubing and then attach this tubing to the collection bag outlet port. Make sure the tubing clamp is closed. The prepared collection bag should look like this. Finally, pack up for the field. You will be able to carry all field sampling materials in a backpack. 
which is equipped with an insulated compartment for keeping samples cold. A toolbox carrier with a separate cold chamber is also available if your site is accessible by vehicle. We will demonstrate packing the backpack here. Add these items to the cold chamber. Two frozen cold packs for maintaining sample cold chain. The prepared filter housing with viral cap filter for sample concentration. The prepared sample collection bag and rope including a short segment of tubing, tubing clamp and tubing adapter. Long and medium length segments of PVC tubing, which will aid in filtration. A bag clamp to keep the collection bag securely closed. A chain of custody form with a clipboard for documenting sample collection. Add these items to the front pocket of the backpack or the top tray of the toolbox carrier. Three small biohazard bags and one large biohazard bag. The small bags will be used to store the used filter, the used rope, and to collect waste items. The large bag will be used as secondary containment for the rope storage and waste collection bags. Four bag fasteners, which are used for closing the biohazard bags. A small, resealable plastic bag for holding the viral cap filter housings inlet and outlet caps during filtration. A whirl pack bag for collecting settled solids. Four wipes for sanitizing sampling equipment. Personal protective equipment for your field team, which typically includes two disposable lab coats, one size medium and one size large, 16 sets of gloves, 8 size medium and 8 size large, two face masks, a pen for chain of custody form, and a permanent marker for marking volumes on the bag. Add a spray bottle filled with disinfectant to one side pocket of the backpack. Add a bottle of ethanol-based hand sanitizer to the other side pocket of the backpack. Finally, add the tripod stand to the outer bungee cords of the backpack or the long compartment of the toolbox. Use the checklist to ensure all sampling materials are in the backpack. Now you're prepared to travel to your first sampling site. You and your field team arrive at the sampling site. Before doing anything else, everyone should put on their lab coat, gloves, and face mask that were packed. Remember, your safety is first. When selecting location to collect a sample, look for deep and flowing water if possible. This will help ensure the sample is well mixed with higher likelihood of detecting pathogens. Now you're ready to set up the BMFS. First, a field team member should assemble the tripod. To do this, assemble the three poles which are supported by an elastic band. These should then fit into the top connector joint. A fourth short pole will attach and stand upright from the connector joint. The assembled tripod should look like this. The clean hands technician should remove the prepared collection bag from the backpack. They should ensure it is properly prepared and that the tubing clamp is closed. The direct contact technician should collect the sample. To collect the sample, submerge the collection bag in water. Hold the rope and drag the collection bag slowly through the water, allowing it to fill to the 6 liter mark. Be careful not to overfill the collection bag. Remove the collection bag from the water and secure it to the tripod stand. To do this, hook the small black tabs on the sides of the collection bag to the pegs on top of the tripod legs. Hook the top loop with the rope to the short pole that sits atop the tripod stand. Placing this bag on the tripod stand will help to drive gravity filtration. The clean hands technician should record the time of sample collection and other pertinent sampling information on the chain of custody form. To avoid the potential for a spill, a bag clamp should be attached to the collection bag. The clean hands technician should be the one to grab the bag clamp from the backpack and give it to the direct contact technician. Attach the bag clamp to the collection bag, just below the mesh. Be sure to avoid any kinks or folds in the collection bag, as this removes the watertight seal. Next, sanitize the outside of the collection bag to reduce your risk of personal contact with sample. 
To do this, the direct contact technician should first change their gloves. The dirty gloves can go in the small biohazard bag meant for waste collection. After putting on clean gloves, the direct contact technician should spray the bag with disinfectant. The clean hands technician should then hand a wipe to the direct contact technician, who should then wipe down the surface of the collection bag. Dispose of the wipe in the small waste collection biohazard bag. The direct contact technician can then untie the rope from the top loop of the collection bag and place the rope into a new small biohazard bag for rope storage. The clean hands technician should seal it closed using a bag fastener. At this point, the direct contact field technician should change gloves. After donning clean gloves, the direct contact technician should record the water level by marking the collection bag with a permanent marker. Meanwhile, the clean hands technician can record this information on the chain of custody form. Allow solid particulates to settle for 10 to 15 minutes after sample collection. After the settling period, the clean hands technician should hold the whirl pack bag below the bag outlet, and the direct contact technician should open the tubing clamp. Collect up to one liter in the whirl pack bag. After our relatively clarified liquid appears to be draining into the whirl pack bag or the whirl pack bag fills, the direct contact technician should close the tubing clamp. The clean hands technician can then close the whirl pack bag and place the sample in a shaded area for later use. The direct contact technician should then change their gloves and record the new water level. Now your team is ready to filter the sample. The viral cap filter housing has three ports. The top black port is the inlet, where the sample flows from the collection bag into the filter. The bottom black port is the outlet, where the sample flows from the viral cap filter housing back to the source water. The third vent port has a white end cap and is not used during sample filtration. Do not remove this white end cap at any point during sample filtration. The clean hands technician should place the two black end caps from the top inlet port and bottom outlet port of the viral cap filter housing in the small resealable plastic bag and place the bag in a secure location. This will keep the caps clean during filtration. Again, the white end cap should not be removed from the vent port during sample filtration. The direct contact technician should attach the medium length segment of PVC tubing to the collection bag outlet tubing adapter and the inlet port on the top of the viral cap filter housing. The direct contact technician should connect the long segment of tubing to the outlet port on the bottom of the viral cap filter housing and then position the other end of the tubing so it feeds back to the source water or other appropriate drainage location. The filtration system is now set up and you are ready to begin filtration. The direct contact technician can now open the tubing clamp and allow the bag to drain by gravity. The filtration time will vary depending on the volume and character and concentration of suspended solids in the water sample. At a minimum, at least 3 liters should pass through the filter, or 40 minutes of filtration time should pass, whichever is longer. If the entire sample passes through the filter, the direct contact technician can hold open the collection bag while the clean hands technician pours the collected sediments from the whirl pack bag back in. The water and solids collected in the whirl pack bag can then be filtered. Viruses absorb to particulate matter, and so this can potentially improve detection. After filtration is complete, the direct contact technician can close the tubing clamp to stop any remaining water from flowing. They can then disconnect the medium length segment of PVC tubing from the viral cap filter housing inlet. The direct contact technician should do this carefully by easing the tubing off the filter housing inlet. If there is any water left in the tubing, the direct contact technician can clamp the tubing closed between their fingers. If necessary, the clean hands technician should now grab the tripod stand below the connector support and move the tripod stand and collection bag so they're beside the source water or other appropriate drainage location. The direct contact technician can then open the tubing clamp to allow the remaining liquid left in the collection bag to drain back to the source water or other appropriate drainage location. Once all of the remaining liquid is gone, the direct contact technician should remove the collection bag from the tripod stand and place it along with the medium length segment of PVC tubing into the small waste collection biohazard bags, which can be held open by the clean hands technician. 
The direct contact technician should next attach the longer tubing that is connected to the ViroCap filter housing outlet port and dispose of it in the small waste collection biohazard bag. The clean hands technician can assist by holding the biohazard bag open. If water remains inside the viral cap filter housing, the direct contact technician should tilt the viral cap filter housing to the side and drain the remaining liquid into the source water or other appropriate drainage location. To avoid inadvertent personal contact with drips, do this close to the ground. The clean hands technician should give the black end caps to the direct contact technician so they can be placed on the filter housing inlet and outlet ports. The direct contact technician should change gloves and then spray and wipe down the viral cap filter housing with a disinfectant. The direct contact technician can then place the used viral cap filter housing into a small, new biohazard bag. The clean hands technician can assist by holding the biohazard bag open. The clean hands technician should secure the bag closed with a bag fastener and then place the filter in the backpack's cold compartment with the frozen cold packs. Next, the direct contact technician should change gloves again. After donning clean gloves, the direct contact technician should spray and wipe down the tripod stand with disinfectant. They can then disassemble the tripod by removing the poles from the connector joint and unfolding the legs. The clean hands technician can place the tripod on the outside of the backpack. Place all remaining waste items and personal protective equipment in the small waste collection bag including lab coats, face masks, and lastly, gloves. The clean hands technician should don a new pair of clean gloves and then close the bag using a fastener. They can then place the small waste collection biohazard bag and the rope storage biohazard bag inside the large secondary containment biohazard bag. Finally, the clean hands technician should place their gloves inside this new bag and fasten it closed with a bag fastener. Carry out your waste in the backpack. After cleanup is complete, all active team members should use the hand sanitizer. Before leaving the sampling site, finish filling out the chain of custody form. Congratulations! The field sampling is now complete. The filter should be transported immediately on cold chain to the processing laboratory.